Hello everyone and welcome to the finale of the Cruiserweight Classic. It only took a month and a significant amount thereafter, but we are finally here to determine who is the true winner of the Cruiserweight Classic. We are down to just four men left here in this tournament. All four men standing a chance of not only winning a shot at the Cruiserweight Championship, not only, you know, and uh, but only I worded that wrong, there we go. Not only winning a shot at the Cruiserweight uh, Championship, but also winning a shot at a contract within this universe, contracted, of course, to the ECW brand due to us having the Cruiserweight division. So tonight, we determine who will be the Cruiserweight, the winner of the Cruiserweight Classic, as was, in a way, almost the ultimate Cruiserweight in this, uh, you know, in these matches tonight. We've got the first semi-final you're seeing here between Psychosis and... Suicide, meaning that a masked wrestler will be in the finals for 100% sake, for sure. We know that a masked man will be in the finals. On top of that as well, later on, uh, right, well, right after this actually, we're going to have um, Matt Seidel versus Ricochet. Ricochet already contracted to the universe on, on Friday Night Smackdown. However, could win an opportunity for the Cruiserweight Championship for Kevin Owens' future shot. So with that being said, Suicide comes towards the ring. He has been quite a dark horse in this tournament. You know, uh, with the record that he had heading into it, you'd assume he would have dropped down the first round with no problem whatsoever. However, that was not the case. Suicide has not only performed well in this tournament, but he has defied the odds. He has got... He is, uh, I'm trying to remember who he picked up the wins against. I can't for the life of me. I think in the quarterfinals... Uh, suicide knocked out someone. I'm, you know, it's been so long, I honestly don't remember. <laughs> and I wasn't the originator of this tournament, so I can't really tell you too much about the, uh, the tally setting. How did he pull that off? Nevertheless, we are going to see one of these two men in the final. We'll also be seeing, of course, as I said, Matt Seidel and Ricochet. And then we'll be seeing a triple threat between three of the four quarter finalists. We couldn't get it to be a fatal four-way because one of the quarter-finalists is the Cruiserweight Champion, Akira Tozawa. So with that being said... This matchup underway now between these two men. Be interesting to see what kind of mentality they go for here. Suicide going right to the legs to kick things off. Perhaps trying to take away the... Well, immediately trying to take away the agility that Psychosis can have. A little bit of a more aggressive start here by Suicide, not really paying attention to the um, to the Lucha or the Cruiserweight aspect of it all. Just both men right now kind of going all out on hitting one another with painful moves. Oh, like a suplex DDT But they by Psychosis as he now puts the boots to Suicide. Both these men have traveled some path to get into this final four. They want nothing more than to be victorious and to walk out as the winner of the Cruiserweight Classic, as to walk out with a guaranteed contract on ECW. However, like I said, it can only go to one man. There may not even be one of these two men. For all we know, the winner of Matt Seidel and Ricochet could walk out as the winner of the Cruiserweight Classic. Oh, big attempted kick there by Suicide Miss, but as I was talking about the Fatal 4-Way earlier, that was supposed to be now, of course, a triple threat due to one of the Cruiserweight finalists being, one of the quarter finalists being Akira Tozawa, the current Cruiserweight champ, uh, we will be seeing in that Davey Richards, uh, John Morrison, and, or Johnny Mundo, and Gregory Helms, who was also already contracted, of course, being on um, the... Uh, ECW brand. Of course, this Cruiserweight tournament, much like the Queen of the Ring, has managed to assist a lot of Cruiserweights into getting themselves onto, well, mostly the ECW roster. We've seen this guillotine leg drop there by uh, Psychosis, but uh, we've seen the likes of Tony Nice has certainly been a prominent figure recently in uh, becoming a, a, a member of the ECW brand and finding success following this tournament, uh, following being eliminated from this tournament. Um, Ricochet, you know, he, he was Prince Puma formerly, I know, but now with him being on SmackDown, now with him being possessing this new character to him, we got Gregory Helms, you know, that's three immediately right off the bat, you got another one here, and for all we know, um, 
All of these semi-finalists could be picked up, really. We don't know what the deal is going to be with that. But I'm sure we'll see over time. Going to work on the arm now is Suicide. Not too sure why he would uh, choose that, but perhaps something in mind, something Psychosis may have up his sleeve that Suicide wants to prevent, or perhaps something that Suicide wants to go for later in the match that he feels as if he needs to go to work on the arms in order to connect with. Suicide in total control right now of Psychosis. Not too sure how Psychosis is going to try and get back into this one. But then again, even though um, Suicide has been in control, his moves that he's been hitting have been a lot of relying him being on the ground. And oh, leg drop of his own there to Suicide, retaliating from earlier in the night. Uh, from earlier in the match, I should say. Suicide into the cover, only managing a one count, however. Psychosis just in total trouble here. He knocked out the likes of Billy Kidman, I believe. Certainly knocked him out. To get here and look at the, the rampant side of Suicide. They just headbutt that turnbuckle as he awaits Psychosis to get up to his feet. Psychosis back up. Psychosis up on the top rope here with Suicide. The crowd getting on their feet. What could we see here? What does he have in mind? Up high. Oh, top rope Falcon Arrow for both men. Could that be Psychosis' ticket to the finals? He doesn't think so. He's going to take a quick hop to the top rope. Psychosis with the guillotine leg drop onto Suicide and into the cover for one, two. No, Suicide gets the shoulder up at two. Psychosis and his weird face. Unable to get the pinfall there up on the second rope now. Hopes for a splash, but Suicide almost saw an incoming. Nice move there by Suicide, who's able to finally get himself back into the swing of things. He's going to the turnbuckle. Certainly pumped up for something right now. What is Suicide looking for? Oh, running knee in the face! Suicide now has grounded any attempt of a comeback by Psychosis, it seems, and may look to finish this one off with DOA. Oh, okay, or just that shitty stunner. That's uh, certainly something. I thought that might be dead on arrival. I don't know how things work. Suicide into the cover, and he's going to the finals. And this is us. All right, well, that stunner, I, I assume that might be dead on arrival. I'm not too sure, but it's, it's done the job, and now... All of a sudden, as Psychosis rolls into us, Suicide is going to the finals. Well, well, well. That is certainly going to be an interesting affair when we witness it. Later on tonight, Suicide has a chance of going from one of the worst records in the history of this universe to being the winner of the Cruiserweight Classic. That could be a very, very interesting affair if that is able to happen. If. Suicide is able to make it occur. We'll see what's going to happen regarding that, but we're going to move on now to our next semi-final match. We're going to find out who's going to be taking on this man. Will it be Matt Seidel or will it be Ricochet? We'll find out next. All right, so with us already knowing that Suicide has wound up in the finals, who will be joining him is the key question. Will it be Matt Seidel who... Is looking a little bit like Kurt Hawkins, I'll be honest, but nevertheless, will it be Matt Seidel going into the finals or will it be Ricochet? Because as I've said already, Ricochet already uh, contracted to the Friday Night SmackDown roster. However, in Ricochet's mind, it's not the guaranteed contract that he's looking for, but rather the shot of the Cruiserweight Championship. Due to him already being Prince Puma, he was able to be acquired, really, with relative ease due to him already being a superstar within the universe at, this, at that point. However, Matt Seidel is not the case. Matt Seidel is someone who was here previously but was then released and is now looking to put his name back out there to, to get back to being a success, to get back to 
being the well, I mean, the being a key threat within the cruiserweight division. Because, like I said, the winner of this, regardless of who it is, will be going to ECW. Will be coming to ECW, and I hope that it is going to be a strong talent that is coming. And in my honest opinion, well, if Ricochet, of course, who's about to make his way out, if he wins, that will not be the case. I'll explain it quite simply. If Ricochet does win, he stays on SmackDown, but he gets the Cruiserweight Championship opportunity. So out of that, there's Seidel and Suicide. With that being said, I'd rather Seidel over Suicide. I believe there's more to get out of Matt Seidel than Suicide. I think Suicide's very... I mean, he is weird, and that is interesting, and he, he fights a little bit differently to a Cruiserweight, so he may be able to go a little bit upper in the tiers, but... When it comes to that ability to get behind someone, it's not as easy with suicide. You look at him and you just think, how am I supposed to get behind this guy? He's, you know, he is not really a character you can connect with. And I'm not saying just because he's wearing a mask you can't connect with him. That's not true, because if you look at the likes of um, people who, I'm trying to think of a, a few names that we've connected with in the past who've had masks. Um... And, um, no, you got the likes of Rey Mysterio. He's a, he's a little bit of a crowd favorite. We've had Kalisto in the past. Um, as, as a masked man, ever won a championship. Kane, there we go. There you go, Kane. You get scared of Kane. Therefore, you are attached to him in some mannerism. So, with that being said, even though I'd like Seidel to come to ECW, I would not be annoyed if Ricochet went on to win this tournament. I think... In my own opinion, I think Ricochet has phenomenal talent. And if he can bring the Cruiserweight Championship to Future Shock, it'll show that they are a threat to be reckoned with on SmackDown. And they could even pose a threat to um, the uh, the members of the... Well, the, uh, the, the little trio that's going on over on Friday Night SmackDown between the King of the Ring, Kenny Omega, and of course uh, the Young Bucks. That's certainly been an interesting trio over the last little, little while. We haven't seen them so much as uh, helping each other, but more so just being at ringside recently. Well, apart from last week, I have no idea how Ricochet just got that to pull off, but there's a great reversal by Seidel. Oh. Oh! Of some kind of tiger. It was like a, a an elevated pedigree, really, is the best way of explaining that one by uh, Matt Seidel. Hoping it's enough here to get the win and quickly move into the finals over Ricochet. There's barely a two count, though. You gotta think Kevin Owens, wherever he is, is paying close attention to this tournament, as while it isn't related to the win loss record, because he's gotta make sure, he's gotta think that, you know, he's made this investment in Ricochet. He's claiming him to be one of the future stars of SmackDown. He doesn't wanna be let down by his choice. He really wants success out of Ricochet. And if he went all the way here and was able to win the Cruiserweight Classic, that would prove that Kevin Owens has invested correctly. Of course, the winner of this doesn't really have that many days to prepare for their Cruiserweight Championship matchup. Due to it being so close to the one-night stand pay-per-view. However, they will still get the fight. Akira Tozawa, who for fairity's sake will be competing on ECW. Just so that way, Akira Tozawa does not have a fitness, uh, fitness boost or is fresh full of, you know, has no bumps and bruises on him. There's a Pele missed! There's a missed Pele by Ricochet. That could have been his ticket there for the 6.30. And a victory over Matt Seidel into the finals. Ricochet now. What a foot power bomb. Taking his time to get back up to his feet. And into the cover goes Ricochet now. Hoping for the three count here. Bailey scrambling a two as Seidel kicks out there. Front face lock and a harsh knee in the face there by Ricochet. Spin heel kick countered. However, Ricochet certainly possessing more fire right now than Seidel. But Seidel turns out attempted fisherman suplex into a roll up. Is it enough for Seidel? It all nearly was. Oh, so nearly was the ticket for the finals. And look at this some kind of. Backbreaker stretch into a neckbreaker by Seidel. 
What a move that was. Into the cover goes Matt Seidel. There's two, and there's not a three count. Ricochet powers the shoulder up very late on there, but Seidel can see an opportunity. Forcing himself up to the top rope here. Matt Seidel to, pro to progress to the finals. Oh, corkscrew moonsault. I thought he was going to go for the shooting star press, but seemed to decide against it. But somehow Ricochet is fighting on here. Somehow this man possesses more ability within him. All that teaching from Kevin Owens surely spurring him on here. But Seidel continues to reverse. This isn't looking good. DDT maybe. Oh! A DDT there, but with no recovery time on the ropes. No time to catch your bearings. Not like a Randy Orton elevated DDT. Just slammed head first into the mat. May have concussed Ricochet. There's two, but he kicks out. This matchup continuing on. These two men cannot afford this matchup to go on too long because the finals is just a short way away. They have barely any time to recover before we head into that match. Nice, uh, almost like a cradle shock by Ricochet. He's going up top. Ricochet's going to fly. What can he hit? Will it be it? Ricochet. 6.30. 630 splash. One, two. No, Seidel. Kicks out at two. And Ricochet can hardly believe it. He still has to continue to fight here against Matt Seidel, who will not die. Claims himself to be reborn. Well, he's certainly showing it here in this fight that he's putting, in this pos in the, just the heart that he possesses. But these two men are risking their bodies just for a spot in the finals. This is not the finals itself. Seidel off the top. Hurricane oh, went for a Hurricane. Overshot it. And both men now lay down. Seidel slowly getting up to his feet first. Very slowly. Ricochet following in suit. This match has been just back and forth, really. An almost complete difference to the first match we saw. Ricochet with a reversal. Steps on the back. Does he have something in mind here? Standing shooting star press to Seidel. Almost a dig at the man. Who is known as being one of the greats of hitting that shooting star press off the top rope. Ricochet back up high. Oh, it blowed a 450. Didn't connect. Can Seidel capitalize? Into the turnbuckle they go. What does Matt Seidel have in mind now? Nothing. He gets a knee in the face by Ricochet. But Discus Forearm is countered. Back into the turnbuckle he goes. This time Seidel gets what he wants. Ricochet now perched up on top. Off the top. Harakarana! What a move there by Seidel. Such a harsh landing. For Ricochet, but unable to capitalize. And oh, he takes a spill to the outside. I hope these guys don't end this matchup in a double count out. Count continuing on here to two. I hope this is just a brief trip to the outside. And we go right back into the ring. Otherwise, we may have a bit of difficulty drawing the finals. I don't want the finals to be won off of... Yes, here we go. We're going right back into the ring. Never mind. Matt Seidel forces Ricochet back into the ring here. And this matchup can continue on. I'm all good with that. Counter by Ricochet. Nicely done. What can he hit here? Nothing. He's not allowed to. Stop once more. And he may get hit with that DDT again by Seidel. Yes, he is. What a harsh slam into the mat it is. And Matt Seidel now. For some reason, going to the turnbuckle. I would have kept on the pace there. I don't think Ricochet is someone you can let off against. And he moves out of the way there just to prove him wrong. Need there. Didn't really get all of it, but he certainly got enough to cause pain. Shooter star press once more. Will Ricochet perhaps see the 6.30 splash on its way? Going to work on the leg temporarily. And now he's going to taunt in the corner. Neither of these men really... 
Just, I don't get, I, I know it's an idea to spare on the fans and again behind you, but you need to just go for it right now before your opponent can recover. Ricochet, up high, 630, caught, oh my god! Caught into an absolutely phenomenal cutter by Matt Seidel. He rolls Ricochet over. Will he get the win? One, two, no! Ricochet forces the shoulder up, but what a counter by Matt Seidel. Can he keep the pace going? He goes out to the apron here. He's calling Seidel up to his feet. He's calling Ricochet up to his feet, I should say. Seidel off top. Harakarana counted into a power bomb. Corkscrew landing as well. Ricochet now after that power bomb. Going right back up to the top rope. Will it be the 630? Yes, it will. 630 splash into the cover. One, two, three. Ricochet is going to the finals. Good God. That was an incredible contest between two men. Back and forth, all the way to the final bell. That cut up by Seidel, I thought it was enough, but Ricochet had other plans. He fought on, and eventually was able to get the 1-2-3 victory with that 6.30 splash. So in the final, Suicide and Ricochet will meet, and we'll find out who is going to be the winner of the Cruiserweight Classic, but before all that, we have a little bit of a break in the, in the, uh, in the midst with a triple threat match between Gregory Helms, Davey Richards, and Johnny Mundo. Let's get to that while Ricochet recovers before his finals. Well, as we await both men to get ready for the finals of the Cruiserweight Classic, we must find out who the best of the rest is in a way, I suppose is one of the ways you could put it. Gregory Helms heads towards the ring. He was... Uh, of course, made it to the uh, quarterfinals before he was defeated by, I believe, to actually be Ricochet. Or, yeah, I think it was Ricochet who did eliminate him. Or was it Seidel? It was one of the two. Anyway, Gregory Helms certainly made it to the uh, quarterfinals. He is now, of course, a contracted superstar to ECW, though. And, um, you know, he's certainly been able to find the uh, benefits of since... Uh, the Cruiserweight Classic, you know, he's in this universe now, he's uh, confirmed to be on a roster, he, he, you know, he's had one shot of the Cruiserweight Championship already, and he may wind up with uh, more as time goes on. But, who knows, because right now, he is focusing on winning this triple threat match and building momentum, so I may pay a bit of further attention in the weeks to come over on ECW. But here comes Davey Richards, still yet to be picked up to a roster. One of the uh, few men left within this match, within this tournament, really, who have not been acquired. Right, on this show, I should say, without being acquired. We, no, I say that, but in reality, it's kind of the minority. There's two people who have been acquired. <laughs> Never mind, then. But, um, there is David Richards. Anyway, certainly made it farther than his, uh, his teammate, Eddie Edwards, did within this tournament. Dave Richards, though, was knocked out in the quarterfinals by... No, I think Richards was knocked out by Seidel. And for some reason, Edge is showing up. I think they may have got that one wrong. Anyway, yeah, here we go. There's Johnny Mundo. Or John Morrison, whatever he's going to be called. They want to call him John Morrison, but I'm going to be edgy and call him Johnny Mundo. <laughs> All right. So Mundo heads towards the ring. He was eliminated. No, no, in my luck, he was eliminated by Ricochet. Everyone was eliminated by Ricochet. There you have it. That is just uh, how things work around you now, okay? You, le you learn to live with it, and you learn to to just accept the fate that is happening. He's warming up on the outside right now. Would be nice if he got in the ring and we got this matchup underway. There's more edge. Um, all right, get it. You, you poke your thumb out, poke your thumb wank, okay? All right, pokey thumb wank. It's just his thumb. You can't see the rest of his hand. Oh, thanks, Johnny Mundo. Also, here we up. Let me start. There's Richards. There's Mundo. There was Helms. Run away! 
Ball of this match already. I mean, this is the way you got to look at it. It's a break in between the main event and the, um, you know, be between the semifinals and the finals. But there's nothing really to be gained from this matchup. I mean, maybe in the case of Richards and Mundo, if they're able to pick up the win. But if Helms wins, he gets a little bit of momentum. But that, that's kind of really it. I mean, he's not exactly beating anyone in ECW either. So he's not exactly incredibly um, assisting himself within the Cruiserweight rank. Oh, the Cruiserweight rankings. He's just beating so He's just beating two guys who aren't employed. So, not really finding much success in that behalf. Nice Northern Light suplex there by Mundo. Early cover. Helms is right on top of it. No, he's not. But it's broken up by count of one. There's a uh, nice neck breaker, though, as we are still nowhere near to this match ending, sadly. It's worth a try. Oh, went for a swant on then. But he was unable to. Richards rolls to the outside right now. Uh oh, Harukarana reversed by Mundo, who slams him into the mat. And now, Mundo going a little bit, well, a little bit slow there, really, with how he was going to work on. Gregory Helms, not too sure. I would have tried to get some, getting some quick moves while he was dazed from the face plant and Richards was down on the outside. 450 there by Mundo, using the ropes to his advantage. And Gregory Helms, though, right up to his feet as David Richards gets back into the ring and completely mistimes that move, whatever he was looking for. As Helms rolls to the outside, Davy Richards and Johnny Mundo getting it on now. Mundo rolls to the outside, only temporarily though, as he gets back in. Oh, there's the Moonlight Drive, I think that one was then, by Mundo. That very fast pace neck breaker, but he's unable to capitalize from it, and he is sent to the outside at the hands of Davy Richards. And oh, Richards, oh, missed our moonsault and goes right into the barricade. Nasty landing for him. Back in the ring now are at least two of the members of this matchup. David Richards still waiting on the outside for whatever reason. Mundo sends Helms into the turnbuckle. Hoping for something there, but it's countered by Helms, who gets a nice running lariat there. And now looks to go to work on Davy Richards while Johnny Mundo's down. Richards, however, not a fan of that. Countering him here. Up on his shoulders in an electric chair position. Davy Richards flips it into a power bomb and the cover, but Mundo's right there to break it up. I feel as if this may be a story of the match. Everyone unable to get a pinfall. Davy Richards rolls to the outside chair. May not have wanted to do that. Johnny Mundo looking to capitalize on the opportunity and pin Helms. Will the only one side to a contract be pinned, is what I was about to say, but that's not the case as he kicks out. Johnny Mundo, up top, corkscrew sent on. And now, wrenching in some kind of chin lock here, but Dave Richards in to break it up and keep this match alive for his hopes. Uh-oh, we may see Johnny Mundo get the same fate as Gregory Helms. Electric chair, power bomb by Richards. Doesn't go for the pin this time round though. Yes, he does. For some reason, he... Took some time before going for it. Helms is still down. There's two. And oh, Mundo kicks out at two. Could have been a good win there for uh, Davy Richards and may have given some, uh, you know, members of the, well, so may have given uh, a brand a reason to perhaps try and sign the Wolves to a contract. That is not to be right now. Gregory Helms looking for a suplex. They reversed though by Mundo. Who now is going to hit a suplex of his own onto Helms. That's a little bit of uh, reverse psychology in a way. Probably not, but you know what? It was nice to say that. Up here. No. Mundo with a great reversal out of that. What could have been a package power, a package power driver there. Richards rolls outside to the... Uh, to the uh, rolls outside to the outside. Nice. Rolls to the outside once more. And Helms really needs to get something going here. He has just been a whipping dog for these two men in this match. Cover here by Mundo off that gut buster, and he gets a two count. 
If one of these two men wanted the win, they'd go all out right now, I think, while Richards is still down on the ground. Yes, you may affect yourself and be unable to get the win, but Mundo is still down, and you need all the offense you can get. Oh, what a... What a low blow there by Johnny Mundo, capitalizing however he possibly can, and Helms with the right idea there at this moment in time to roll to the outside. That was very... Um, kind of surprising by Johnny Mundo. Kicked him right in the balls. Gregory Helms still down as David Richards hopes for the win there. Barely scrambling a two count. Helms right back up to his feet and right back into this match. Paying attention, you're slowly waiting on the apron. No, he's just going to get himself back in the ring now. Nice work there by Mundo. And cover here as Helms just kind of stands there. Oh, he gave himself enough time to give a little bit of a taunt and then break up the pin. Richard's still down on the mat. Helms needs to get something going here. And he's hoping for it with these clotheslines. Ducks the punch. Super kick into the face of Mundo. Who's now going to roll outside. Knee in the face there by Helms. Can he get the pin on Richards? Nope. No, he can't. Need right in the back, though. He's continuing on with the offense here. Trying to impress myself. Trying to show that it was, oh, a good reason to sign him. What a single knee face buster there. Go for the pin. Go for the pin right away. Mundo still down. He's up to his feet at a rapid rate. There's two, but oh, Richards kicks out again. Helms, though, really starting to come back into his own in these last few moments. Now starting to put up his own kind of fight. With the Eye of the Storm is what I believe it's called. Something along those lines. I still forget it, but I'll, I'll eventually remember the name. Or, you know, find out what the name is. Will Richards be able to break up the pin in time? There's one. There's two. Oh, no, never mind. Mundo kicks out at two. Gregor Helms must be deeply frustrated. He's hit both men with a powerful maneuver, and he's unable to get the pin. And now, all of a sudden, Davey Richards... With him up on his shoulders. Into. No. What a counter. What a reversal by Helms. Absolutely outstanding. To get that Hurricanrana off. However, it may have been meaningless. There's a, uh, a neck breaker. And once more, Helms rolls to the outside. Leaving Mundo and Morrison in the ring alone. What will we see here by Morrison? Just going for uh, Mundo, I should say. He's going for the cover while Helms is still down. And it's not enough. Davey Richards kicks out. Helms taking some time to recover on the outside, but he's benefited by the fact that Mundo at this moment in time is just slowly wearing down Richards. Not too sure why he thinks he's going to get a three count off of that. And he's not. Good, good. And again, he's going to work on the neck. This is really dull to witness on it. Mind David Richards getting up to his feet here. Punching the ribs. And a bulldog for effect there by Gregory Helms. Looks as if Mundo's trying to roll outside of the ring. He's able to get out of the ring. And once more, there's another cover here. Too many covers right now going on. Desperation to win. And you just need to do more. And Helms, I think, might be aware of that right now. Mundo's still down on the outside. He's got to try and capitalize while he has the opportunity. Will he be able to do so? No, he won't. He's countered there by Richards, who sends him into the turnbuckle. Helms might be in a bit of trouble here. Lights up his chest with a chop. David Richards really not being ever really not being reliant at all on using the top rope to his advantage. Whereas the other two men have been a little bit more reliant upon their agility. Nice work there, but ooh, what a move there by Mundo. Like a flip slam. Cover after on Helms, but Helms' leg was in the ropes. So he was able to get out of that one. Quite lucky as well. Dragon screw there to Mundo. Cover. Why go for the pin, Helms? You know Richards is in the ring. And since when has a dragon screw ever pinned an opponent? And now you're just, ple now you're just pleading ignorance. That was your own fault. Brain Buster maybe on the way. No, Helms is able to sneak out of it. And he catches both men with a strike there. He's reversed by Mundo. Spin kick countered. And he's trying to go for Texas Cloverleaf. What is he doing? Why is he locking in at a submission 
with another man still in the ring. Some stupidity being shown here by pretty much everyone involved in this matchup right now. Nice punch here. That was a series of punches by Davy Richards, who proceeds then to throw Helms across the ring, basically. Mundo still recovering on the outside, and it looks to be a very quick submission attempt. I'm sure Helms' foot is in the ropes, and it is. Mundo up to his feet now. He may look to take flight in a moment. Nope, okay, just tease us all again. And guess what he's going to go for? Pinfall! Yep, thank you. Neck breaker there by Helms. He needs to capitalize in some kind of aspect. Just hitting, you know, just hitting a move and then going into a cover while, especially while another man is still in the ring, is not the advantage you need to be taking. Helms setting his sights on Richard here. This is exactly what he needs to do in order to try and pick up the win, maybe, while Mundo is still down. Don't want to take too long, though, because Mundo may be able to get back up to his feet. The referee checking in there on Mundo. Seems as if he's still able to compete in this matchup. David Richards collides head first into the turnbuckle. And now, opportunity here for Gregory Helms. He has David Richards down, but he needs to capitalize. Otherwise, Mundo's going to take that moment away from him. Go for the pin. Go for the pin. Pin him, Helms. Pin him. He's going for the pin. Can Gregory Helms get the win? One, two... Yes, he can! It's a win for Gregory Helms. That is what I wanted to see. Very, very fortunate. Very, very glad as well that Gregory Helms was victorious there. Gets the three count. He continues to build momentum in his own way. No, I did say this was a bit of a throwaway match, but um, Helms made the most of it. He got the win. That's what mattered. And... Who knows? Maybe Helms will now be a uh, bit of a, a bit of a threat in the cruiserweight division in the weeks to come. You'll just have to tune into the A Show ECW, which you should be, and find out. Nevertheless, we now move on to our next match, our final match of the night. It's the finals of the cruiserweight classic: Suicide versus Ricochet. All right, here we go. The finals of the cruiserweight classic. Who is going to win at a suicide? And Ricochet. It has been a, uh, a long road. It has also been a road where they were temporarily broken down for over a month. But, you know, th these things do happen. You do encounter some problems when on the road. But, uh, nevertheless, Suicide here just one match away from getting himself an opportunity back in this universe. And against the Cruiserweight Champion in just a few days. There is a real potentiality that he could be the next Cruiserweight Champion, especially with how he's performed within this tournament so far, especially with getting into the finals. Maybe, just maybe, there is a future for Suicide within this universe, but we don't know, to be fair. We don't know if he's going to be able to pull it off. We, uh, it, It's up in the air, really, against Ricochet, because we've seen Ricochet's ability in the past, and... Even though Suicide, in a way, put up the better showing against Psychosis, he may not even he may not be able to execute that against Ricochet. Ricochet may be too fast for Suicide to handle, and for all we know, then it could result in a victory for Ricochet. However, there is also a possibility that Ricochet is just too hurt. You know, the uh, the match that he put on just now against Matt Seidel was an amazing matchup, but it took a lot out of him. He had two 6.30 splashes. He took a lot of punishment as well from Seidel. Especially that cat, especially that cutter that seemingly caught him out of thin air. So, a lot on the line here in a way. And a lot in the... Um, when it comes to thoughts about whether or not he'll be able to pull it off. This is a really 50-50 affair when you think about it. But, um... We'll see who's going to get the win. Out of these two men. <clears throat> Honestly, I think Ricochet is going to win it. I think Ricochet is the better competitor out of the two. I think he's proven he's able to do it more often. He's a Cruiserweight champion of the past. So he has the potentiality to, you know, he knows if he goes into this scenario, it's going to be just like a title match. He's just got to put that mindset to it and walk out with the victory. Can Ricochet get it done? Absolutely. Will he get it done? I don't know, in a way. I, I, I'm choosing him to win, but 
but I don't, I'm not 100% confident in him being able to have the abilities to get the 1 2 3 in this one. So that's what's making me a little bit worried, but nevertheless, here we go. The finals of the Cruiserweight Classic are upon us. Ricochet, suicide. It's a battle of the three syllables. Who is going to be the best three syllable and who's going to be the winner of the Cruiserweight Classic? Who's going to be fighting Akira Tozawa on pay per view at one night stand? That is what we're here to find out. Knee in the face right off the bat by Ricochet. However, it is met with a counter by Suicide. You can certainly see the advantage. Suicide has much more bulkier than Ricochet. I don't know if that's the suit just adding to it, but I would assume some sort of, you know, there's got to be something in the way when it comes to muscles assisting him there. <coughs> surfboard stretch, I believe that to be right now. Cross-armed surfboard stretch as well, but Ricochet gets out of it. A little splash. And Suicide kicks up to get out of it. Nice arm drag there by Ricochet to counter. Certainly both men getting off to a fiery start in the desperate attempts to try and get a win here. Ricochet dragging Suicide into the middle of the ring so he can connect with a Shining Wizard right in the back of the head. Feeling some confidence early on and taking the opportunity to hype up the crowd, get the crowd chanting his name in the finals. However, Suicide used that to get back up to his feet and may use it to slow Ricochet right back down, and he does so with a fireman's carry. Pele kick. Taking the leg out of Ricochet. Taking the high-flying ability out of him. Taking that 630 splash out of him. But Ricochet responds with a knee from the same leg that Suicide just tried to go to work on. Remember, this is all about right now. For, for Ricochet, this is just an opportunity the Cruiserweight Championship. For Suicide, this is a ticket back into the universe. This is a, a chance for him to get another opportunity. Get another mo Get, you know, just another chance. That, it, that might spur him on more, but I'm not too sure how the mindset of Suicide works. I'm not sure if it would actually spur him on anymore. There's a back suplex, though, to Ricochet. And once more, Suicide's doing a better job at the start. Than Ricochet is, who's able to roll out of the way nicely there, though, and connect with a drop kick that didn't really look like it got fully, though, on Suicide. Ricochet, with him being the smaller out of the two, I think he's got to try and capitalize in any way he can. And right now, he's capitalizing by walking all over the place. Ricochet, oh, went for a second rope moonsault there. Suicide out of the way, but right back into it goes Ricochet. We just saw that move from Johnny Mundo in the previous match, but there's Ricochet's variation of it. Nice scent on there, or swan on splash. But Suicide's right back up to his feet. And right back to work on Ricochet. No, he's not. Jawbreaker. Imagine what it would mean for SmackDown to have the winner of the Cruiserweight Classic and a potential Cruiserweight Champion once more. It would be huge. Not just for SmackDown, but of course for Ricochet and for Kevin Owens as well. To bring both men that momentum they need to continue fighting on SmackDown for that opportunity. It would really prove as well, Kevin Owens' is claimed correct, that Ricochet is the future of SmackDown. Whoa, running knee right in the head though by Suicide. He doesn't use the high-flying ability of he, that he could have access to once more. And instead is going to the ropes. Going to that turnbuckle. Running knee on the way for Ricochet. There it is. Caught him square in the jaw. That could be enough. Will it be enough, though? Suicide continuing to go to work here. Leg drop. Firing it up once more. And another leg drop there on a ricochet. He's in position. He's ready to deliver the final blow. He's ready to win the Cruiserweight Classic. Kick in the gut is reversed. Oh, what a spin kick in the face, though. Ricochet was still able to counter it, but can he keep fighting is the question. Wasn't it? Oh, no. Wasn't able to move out of the way of that drop kick there. And that certainly looked like it caught him flush. Suicide continuing on with the offense here. Up on his shoulders. Ricochet gets out of it. Very nicely done there into a reverse DDT. Not too sure what Ricochet is thinking here. But he's sending Suicide into the turnbuckle. Certainly aggressive strikes there down onto Suicide. 
Ricochet going to the outside. Actually, we've seen this from a, a few people within the universe, primarily Roman Reigns. There's all this leaping drop kick into the head of Suicide. May have rattled him. May have put him out for business. May have won Ricochet, the Cruiserweight Classic. There's two. No, not to be. Ricochet though continuing to fight and he's going up top. Will it be the 6.30 splash right after? Unable to get that three count. It's going to be the Imploder 450. Connect with it onto Suicide. How much more? Well, maybe not much more. I was about to say how much more can Suicide take? Maybe not much more now because he's pulling out the reversal. He's trying to go to work here on Ricochet. Off the second row. No. Wait. Sunset flip. Sunset flip into the cover. Will it be enough to win him? The Cruiserweight Classic. No, it won't. Ricochet kicks out. But Suicide is going to go to the top rope here. He's going to look to fly. Suicide. Up high. Guillotine leg drop. Taking a page out of Psychosis' book. From earlier on in the night. Uppercut though by Ricochet. Suplex, nicely hit. Look at this though, Ricochet refusing to let go right now of Suicide, continuing with maneuver after maneuver. Onto the mysterious masked man, what are we going to see here now? Suicide recovering in the middle of the ring, Ricochet up top, drop kicked him right in the chest! Will he go, for yes he will, into the cover, will it be a win for Ricochet? Ew, no! That was inches away. Tenths, maybe even a tenth away from being the Cruiserweight Classic for Ricochet. And now, Northern Lights suplex, here we go. Flipping over into a brain buster. Akin to the WWE Champion, Bobby Fish. Suicide may be done for. May have had his brain rattled on that one. It's one, two... No, he's still in it. And Ricochet must be getting desperate now. Must be thinking, what more can he do to get the win? Suicide not moving, though. You saw it there. He just took that moonsault and is still unable to fight back. Never mind. Suicide jawbreaker now. Oh, caught with a knee right in the skull. Step up into Zaguri is countered, though. Both men going fairly back and forth now on one another. Kick in the gut. Knee denied. Now we're getting into a bit of a striking affair between these two men for a second. Suicide though slowing that down. Uh-oh. Up against the ropes again. Running knee. Will he hit it? Yes, he will. It's another running knee to the face of Ricochet. But Ricochet counters once more with another jawbreaker. Tilt a whirl. Harakarana for Suicide. Nice little leaping leg drop there. And he lifts him up once more. What more can Ricochet give? What more can Suicide give? These two men giving it their all in the finals right now. And Ricochet's going to go back to this move. Going to go back to the drop kick into the chest. In an attempt to knock out, to finish Suicide. In an attempt to win the Cruiserweight Classic. Can he do it? He took too long there before going into the cover. And he's aware of it. Ricochet, Northern Lights, connected, flips over, lifts his way up into the brain buster, one last time maybe, drags him to the middle of the ring and hooks the leg for one, two, three, no, oh my god. Suicides had everything thrown at him and proceeds to still hang on in this one. With no health, he's still hanging on. It's fucking ridiculous. He's going to win. I know he's going to win. That's what's frustrating me. 
Ricochet up on the second rope now, just hoping that anything can get the win. He misses the Falcon's arrow. Not the Falcon arrow. Phoenix Splash, that's the one. Birds confuse me. Counter by Ricochet. Spin kick countered. It was a very nice reversal as well. And now, looking for the DOA. Dead on arrival. There it is. One, two. It's enough. Suicide has won the Cruiserweight Classic. There it, that is it. He is victorious. He is tossing off the referee in his celebration. Ricochet threw everything at Suicide and it just wasn't enough. Headed into this tournament with the worst record imaginable. But now Suicide has been reborn. Suicide is the winner of the Cruiserweight Classic, is the newest member of the ECW roster, and will compete this Sunday at one night stand against Akira Tozawa for the Cruiserweight Championship. Well, there we have it. This tournament finally comes to an end. And that's the man who is your winner right there. That is the man who could be the next Cruiserweight Champion, but regardless of the outcome on Sunday, tonight, we say Suicide is the winner of the Cruiserweight Classic. And there you have it. This tournament comes to an end. We wrap this one up. And who knows, we may have something lined up. If you want to see, if you perhaps have a tournament in mind, I will put this actually right down in the comments probably. If you have a tournament in mind that you want to see that might be interesting, leave it down and we'll see if, uh, see if we're interested enough to continue on with this tournament structure. But as for now, the Cruiserweight Classic comes to an end. Congratulations to Suicide. And I'll end this episode. I'll end this tournament. Thank you guys for watching. Take care, guys. And ta-ra.